First, I want you to call, call your minds back to yesterday. You actually did have a look at some rainfall measurements, like over the course of a year, here's how much rainfall fell in Sydney or whatever. I wonder if you remember, rainfall is measured in a somewhat unusual unit. Does anyone know what's going Now, you can measure it in kilometers, but actually usually, and like if you hear it on like a weather report, yeah, they, um, they actually say, oh, we got 34 millimeters of rain today. And you're like, is that a, is that a lot? Is that a little? Now, this is a bit weird. I always found this quite strange because rain takes up like 3D space. That's volume or, or capacity at least, right? So why are they measuring it with the same thing that I measure <coughs> lines with? It's not like rain arranges itself in a line. So what's with that? Yeah. Uh, don't they measure snow in, in uh, well, it. General, well, that's yeah, yeah because of the countries that they're in. Okay, Maddie. Okay, so I need you to help me draw some diagrams here. The first one we're going to draw is exactly what Maddie suggested. So um, over here, I'm going to draw. This is basically what it looks like. This is the cylinder that I've drawn. Um, I actually should make this a little rounder in here. And uh, it's true. If you go to a weather station, you'll see something that looks very, very similar to this. And um, as the rain falls, the cylinder gets fuller and fuller. And when they say, oh, millimeters, they're measuring how high the rain has gone. Now, here's the weird thing that, that's always, always unsettled me until I actually start to think about it. Who decided? <laughs> Who decided that uh, this thing here should be whatever size that it is? What if I change the size of it? Wouldn't I then get like a different measurement? Is there some company that decided this is the standard size for all rainfall measuring things? And then I realized, because I actually went to a school where they, they did do weather measurements and whatnot, kind of that there is not a standard size for that thing. Even though lots of them are made by the same company, so they're the same size. They don't have to be like this. They don't even have to be round. So beside this, I want you to draw another thing. Just draw for me like a, um, a box. Here's my very beautifully drawn box, um, which has water in it, as you can see. Uh, now here's the thing. If on a day it rains, okay, and you've got your cylinder here, which looks like something designed to measure heights of water, and then you've got something right next to it, which is a completely different shape, completely different size, so long as they're in the same place, amazingly, they will have exactly the same number of millimeters drawn on them. And if right next to it, you have like some enormous pool, like I grew up in my house. Um, and it's like, you know, the size of this room, okay? And if you had millimeter markings on it, your pool would also have increased by exactly the same amount as are on these tiny instruments, even though they're completely different shapes and sizes. Now the question is, why? Why would the number of millimeters be the same no matter what instrument you used. Any thoughts? Yeah. Because the cylinder is smaller, it's only getting a smaller area of the rain. Whereas mm -hmm. if a pool, it's like a lot bigger. So you're getting a lot more of it, but then the height is the exact same. Yeah, very good. So let's just imagine this, right? Suppose um, every we got one millimeter of rain. I'm just choosing one millimeter just to keep things simple. Okay. How much rain would it take to make this thing go up by one millimeter? And the answer is not very much. Okay. So it would go up a little bit. Now it takes more rain, physically more rain, to make this go up by one millimeter, right? But because of the object's area, right, if you looked vertically from this, it's wider, it's longer. So therefore, it collects more rain, it would collect the same volume of rain to make it go up one millimeter. And the same with a pool, right? Because it is so much larger again, even though it takes more water to move the needle, to actually get it to move up one millimeter, well, it is exactly that same size that it needs to be to do that. 
So even though it would make sense to measure it in a volume, like mils or liters or whatever, because this is consistent, no matter what you're measuring with, this is what they say. Okay. So now, underneath your, um, underneath your diagrams, right? We do actually want to work out, we want to work out a volume. Because if you're consuming water, it's not enough to say, oh, we got 13 millimeters of rain. Um, you need to know how much is actually in your tank that you can say use to water your plants or whatever. So we want to work out volume of water. Generally, what we're thinking about is collected by a house. If you've ever seen or live in a house which has a rainwater tank, right? Basically, all that's happening is just like we have gutters, right? And our gutters, well, basically, they just spill out into uh, onto the pavement. Their gutters are designed so that all of the water collected by the entire roof is funneled into the tank. Okay. So if you want to work that out, well, actually, now it makes a difference whether you've got a smaller or a bigger thing. Bigger house, bigger roof, you collect more water. Does that make sense? 